All right, so the truck's loaded and um, running, ready to go, sitting here. If I need to get the dogs and go, I can. Sprinkler's up on the roof. I'm going to move that sprinkler down here in a minute. So, what did I pack? Well, just some clothes and hygiene type stuff. And then just the things, pretty much the high dollar things that could fit in here. Uh, first of all, I got all my guns. Well, almost all my guns and almost all my ammo. Ammo cans all underneath there. Uh, guns are in there. Of course, the dogs are going to take up most of the room. And I, that gray box back there is the generator. And, and, and it's not a, a question of, well, do I want my generator? I need my generator. It's more important than anything else. No, but it's it's $500 that will fit in here. Um, you know, that's a Makita saw um, if it's in there. Uh, <laughs> frankly, when I look around, I don't see a lot of things that, you know, I can fit in here that are valuable enough to take up the space. I mean, I have more expensive tools than that, but a lot of them are big. And uh, I got some other tools in the uh, Sawzall and angle grinder and reciprocating saw drill. But, um, so I'm loaded up. Trucks running, trucks gassed up. Dogs are confused. I've got dog stuff. I've even got cat stuff. So, here's the plan. First of all, I'm going to move that sprinkler, like I said, and then I'm going to go eat something because I have not eaten and I'm starving. And then I'm going to move the car out here in the field somewhere away from the trees. I've also got a sprinkler down here. Uh, and I'm moving it back and forth what are in the grass. Now let's go see where the fire is. And it's very confusing because literally one minute you'll look and you think, oh, it's dying down, it's going that way, and then you'll come back out and it'll look like it's flared and you just don't know. So the police were here, the, the sheriff was here, just as my wife and mother were leaving, telling us to evacuate. And I said, is there an evacuation order? And he said, you need to evacuate. So, I, I don't know. I don't know if they can make you physically. They don't have time for that stuff. So anyway, I told him, yeah, I'm going to. And if they come back, the truck's running. I mean, I'm ready to if I need to. Helicopters are doing a hell of a job going back and forth um, with water buckets. And um, there's the fire. So it's crossed, was well, it crossed the interstate long ago. And it's crossed the road between here and the interstate. So it's right, it's right there. It's three miles away, probably four miles away, tops. Uh, maybe less as the crow flies. But it has to come across there, which is all woods, and then it has to cross this bayou. So, and, and I'm not trying to be, you know, some sort of, you know, hero kind of thing. It's just I don't feel like it's time to go. My neighbor over here, he's, he's still there also. Now he's got two boats and uh, you know we've already talked and, and we've agreed to tell each other if one decides to leave and he said you know if, if something really goes terribly wrong um, you know run over here and we'll get in the boat and we'll just go out in the bay and um, so I've got that. <laughs> we'll call that plan B. So the sun's going down. My plan is to get in there and eat something and then I'm going to come out and sit down in a lawn chair and just keep an eye on it. Well, it's about 12.30, midnight 30, and um, I'm out here by myself. I know of three of us that have stayed back. I'm sure there's others, but my neighbor and uh, my brother stayed back, and they're both sleeping. And uh, I've got the fire watch. And I don't think you're going to be able to see much of this, but the uh, the glow from the flames oh, is there across the bayou. Let's see if I can zoom into it. It's high drama, folks. So there it is. 
I don't really know what's going on. There was a press conference about 8 o'clock last night, and um, they said that at least 12 homes were lost and many more damaged. And um, they said that the people that evacuated could not expect to be back at least until noon tomorrow. So that means my wife and my mother are out of the picture at least till then, and that's fine. Um, I know they're not comfortable, but um, I know where they are and they're safe. And, um, and I feel pretty safe. Uh, things have really calmed down out here. Um, I mean, obviously the fire's still going, but but it's not near as bad. The wind's calmed down some. And, um, and here's the funny thing. I've got power. Uh, <laughs> they said the power was off, but our power comes from a different direction. We live off of a circular road, and this fire is on one end of it. And evidently, um, we're like the last place that has power. Um, and I don't know if that's going to last. I'm, I'm ready for it to get turned off, but it hasn't so far. So I'm just uh, doing stuff, keeping busy, keeping awake. And uh, I come out here every 15 minutes. What I've done is I've set a timer, a little egg timer. And every 15 minutes I come out, check things out, walk around, maybe sit down a, for a minute or two in the lawn chair and um, just keep an eye on things. Uh, but there's been some high drama today. As I said, my neighbor stayed and um, he, uh, he had two guys drive up to his, his um, house and begged him to take him, to take them in his boat, not too far, not too far over into a cove on the bay. And uh, they had dogs there at the house and the police wouldn't let them back in. And so Bud didn't really want to do it, but he, he finally consented and he took them over in the boat. And he couldn't get real close, he said, because uh, it's low tide. They jumped out and waded ashore. And, he asked, do you want me to wait? They said, no, we're staying. And he said, what are you going to do if the fire comes? And he could see the fire. And they said, well, we'll get the dogs. We'll just walk out into the bay. And so he left them. But you know, whether you think that was the right move or the wrong move on their part, whether you think Bud should have helped them or not, those are people making their own decisions, right or wrong or indifferent. And I prefer that to the damn authorities stopping me today and not letting me go back into my home. And obviously it was far too early to be doing things like that. Um, it was hours before uh, the actual evacuation. And a matter of fact, when I finally did get back in, my neighbors didn't even know that they had they'd blocked the roads. They didn't even know. It was, it was news to them. When I told them I'd been sitting out on the road for 40 minutes, not able to get back to, to my mom, which I got to tell you, that was awful. My wife and I sitting on the side of the road, you know, all we did, we, we just took a car up to get it out of, out of harm's way because we got too many cars and not enough drivers. And to be stuck and told we couldn't go back to my mom who was sitting at the house and not knowing where we were because the phone lines were down. It was awful. It was awful. And no matter how many times I pleaded with that state trooper, I have a 90-year-old mother. He just said, I'm just following orders. And he was. He was just following orders. And I could see, I could see the pain on his face. But the fact was, for 40 minutes, I couldn't get back in here. That scared the crap out of me.